My name is Raymond Haug, and it's an honor to speak with you today. As an Everett Community College student, I have learned many things outside of my coursework. Most important among them, it doesn't matter where you start, but where you finish. For me, my journey began with many barriers. As a young teenager, I had felt wronged by the world. I thought I was a victim of the circumstances around me. I saw what others had and what I didn't. Focusing on this, I felt like an outsider to the world of family, careers, and education. This focus led me down a dark path, and consequently, I spent much of my time as a teenager and young adult in prisons across the state. Some people may hear this and think, what a waste, a waste of life, of time, and potential. In retrospect, I now see that I had to lose completely what little I had left to afford myself the opportunity to be found. The potential was always there, I just lacked the confidence to act on it. During my last year of incarceration in a drug treatment class, I came across a packet of papers that would forever change my life, titled the Post-Prison Education Program. Hope is a dangerous concept to express or talk about in prison as inmates will harass anyone they find in possession of a dream. I secretly took the packet of papers back to my cell and flipped through the pages. The program, started by ex-convict Ari Cohn, empowers incarcerated inmates to sign, sign up for the FAFSA and apply to colleges prior to the release. If accepted into the program, they assist with bus fare and books to help recently released inmates get started. I had never really considered college before, but I knew I needed to fundamentally shift my life. I filled out the application paperwork and applied the next morning. I was subsequently accepted. My biggest personal barrier came the first day I stepped onto campus. The voice in my head said, do you belong here? Will they know you're an imposter? You'll never make it. I kept my past a secret and tried to remain anonymous, certain that as soon as these people found out where I'd been the last few years, I would no longer be welcome. I also feared that each class I enrolled in would be the one that proved I wasn't smart enough to stay here, yet those days never came. As the quarters rolled on and I kept excelling in my classes, success became a virtue that I strived for and I became more confident. Having missed out on so much, I resolved to never pass on new opportunities. I responded to club invites, attended university and career fairs, and even accepted a tutoring job on campus. Honestly, I think Debbie, the tutoring center director, just wanted to give me a legitimate excuse for pretty much already living there. Each passing quarter, I was one step closer to completing the dream that I had allowed to take root in my garden of doubt. While at ABCC, I learned more than calculus, physics, chemistry, and how to write essays. When I was hired as a tutor, I had to interview with HR to go over the circumstances of each one of my criminal charges. The shame of my past was so overwhelming, I thought about not opening that chapter of my life in front of these nice people. Yet I reminded myself there are opportunities out there and I was resolved to get the job. They hired me in spite of my past. What this taught me other than humility and acceptance was to reach out. The confidence I gained from surviving that interview led me to an important discovery. I could no longer listen to the voice of doubt in my head. I used this experience and I started applying for scholarships, colleges, and jobs I didn't think I could get. All of the relationships from reaching out not only strengthened my support network, but provided unique opportunities for me to participate in my own life to the highest extent. My life here on campus has been so much more than textbooks. This final quarter at EVCC has been full of unseen barriers. Life has been altered drastically. We lost our jobs, our classrooms, and the requirement to wear pants. We learned about tigers, video conferencing, and how to homeschool our children. Not any of these barriers bested our resolve. For me, I thought this day would never come. My two-year associate's degree was filled with turns and detours. The road was bumpy, but I stuck to it. What started as little successes turned into bigger goals. Bigger goals turned into more classes. More classes turned into four years. And with it, my first degree. When I started at EVCC, I had no grand aspirations of success. I could barely muster the courage to step through the doors my first day. But I kept coming to class. Through breakups, broken down cars, job losses, snow weeks, and a global pandemic, my determination carried me to the classroom. And what I learned here 
will carry me through what lies next. Unlike prison, our futures have no physical barriers to entry. I didn't have a high school diploma, a clean record, a high school GPA, or go to prom. Today, I do have this degree. I've received scholarships and grants from EVCC, joined Phi Theta Kappa, and received a full ride scholarship to the University of Washington. And I have a new family, a wife and a baby, who have helped me, to have supported me, not hindered me, through all I've accomplished so far. And this is just the beginning. All of us have achieved great things while at EVCC. It's time to be proud of our accomplishments, to celebrate and reflect on the barriers we have overcome as individuals and Trojans. I know that my time with EVCC forever changed my outlook and perspective. I know going forward, whether in your career or classroom you find yourself in, the extent of your success is proportional to your ability to tune out the voice of doubt. It doesn't matter where we started, only where we finish. Thank you. <laughs>